Hello, I'm William from Boxer2Valve.com and today I'm delighted to show you the VAPE 12 volt ignition and charging system for this BMW R60. The system that we'll be installing today on this R60-2 also fits the R50 and R69-2 and S models. However, we also have VAPE systems for all post-war BMW motorcycles, both singles and twins, even the very rare R68. Check out our website to find the right system for your motorcycle. Once installed, this bike will benefit from a super reliable 12 volt brushless charging system and a breakerless electronic ignition with a spark voltage of up to 40,000 volts. The bike will start easier and run better due to the hotter spark and resulting more efficient combustion. We'll also be replacing all of the bulbs with 12 volt equivalents and improved lighting is an additional passive safety advantage. VAPE manufactures ignition and charging systems for many, actually most, classic motorcycles. Here at Boxer 2 Valve, we offer the entire BMW range of VAPE products. VAPE is no newcomer to the market segment. They originally supplied the German company Power Dynamo with components and then bought the entire company in early 2018. The quality is top notch and installation is straightforward, as I'll be showing you in just a bit. But first, let's have a look at the contents of the kit. You'll receive the wiring harness with, with connectors, new ignition wire with dust boots, the voltage regulator, rectifier, the necessary hardware, rotor, stator, coil, and the ignition control unit with a mounting bracket, as well as this piece here which fits on the end of the camshaft uh, for the seal, the camshaft seal to ride on. In addition to the parts that are included with the kit, there's a few other things that you'll probably want to pick up if you're doing this conversion. You'll need a rotor, if you don't have one already, tool to remove the original rotor and we also recommend a VAPE rotor removing tool in case you ever need to remove the new rotor. So these, these are the only real special tools that you need. The original 6 volt battery will need to be replaced with a 12 volt battery. Technically the system is capable of running without a battery but we suggest that you also run a battery so that the lights will work when the motor is not running for safety reasons. Because these bikes don't have a starter motor, you don't really need a large battery. Something like this will work just fine. It's a sealed lead acid battery or SLA battery commonly available for UPS systems or alarms, whatever. This one measures about 135 millimeters by 70 millimeters by 60 millimeters. And it fits perfectly inside of this hollow battery case, which retains the stock appearance and that way you can put a little foam rope around here and have a, a really cool look, old looking battery and inside you've got the 12 volt battery. So we will get into installing this later. For an added touch we also have the Bosch sticker that you can put on there so you can fool about everybody who might look at the bike. If you'd rather you can also take an old battery case, this is actually a, a real 6 volt battery, and you can um, hollow it out. This one's got the foam rubber in there for the battery. Um, you can do that as well, but if you do, you want to be very, very careful uh, and observe great precaution when dealing with the acid and all that. So be very careful if you decide to go that route. On this motorcycle, we're going to opt for the brand new version of battery. We also have all of the 12 volt bulbs ready to go and you won't need to replace your 6 volt horn. It'll take on a new tone with the additional voltage but it should be just fine. So we've also got new spark plugs laid out, spark plug connectors and a fuse holder and fuse. I'll get into all that in great detail once we install it but now we've got everything ready let's get started with the install. This bike already has the battery and seat removed but so first off, I'm going to remove the fuel tank. Taking the tank off of one of these old bikes with the uh, crossover line, it's always kind of a pain in the butt because it wants to leak everywhere. These clamps are really neat. I, I really like them a lot. It just pinches the 
fuel hose. So just point, wanted to point that out. All right, got that done with a minimal of spillage. As I stated earlier, the battery's already been removed on this bike. If that were not the case, you'd want to go ahead and take the battery out. Now, at least disconnect it, but maybe just remove it at this point in time before you take the front cover off. And of course, the horn is kind of in the way, so I'll get that out of the way first, so this is all easier to do. It's okay to just let that set like that or take it off completely. Uh, looks like these engine protection bar brackets are kind of in the way a bit. So I'll have to, maybe I can get by with just removing one of them. There we go. That was enough to just take one of them off. Okay, pretty much everything you see here has got to go. We're going to be replacing more or less everything there. So we'll start one thing at a time. Okay, there's the advanced unit. Comes out with the aid of a six millimeter Allen wrench. There's the coil and the points plate and the ignition stator. That just simply came off easily. And now we can pop off the ignition rotor. So because this piece is no longer going to be needed and the seal rides on this part, that's why the kit is supplied with this piece here. Now there are, there are a couple different versions over the years, different diameters. This one's 25 millimeters and the appropriate part is supplied. So that is going to basically go on the end of the camshaft, bolt in like like so and attach with the supplied screw and that then creates the uh, oil seal ne that's ne necessary. If you have any oil leakage, now is a good time to replace that seal. But this one looks pretty good so we'll just take our chances by putting this new part in in just a moment. For right now we'll just keep taking things apart. These are kind of pressed in. Sometimes you need a little bit of help to get the, the uh, generator off of there, just a little heel bar, something like that to just, once you've taken the screws out, very carefully lift it out like that.
And once again, using the, the removal tool, pop that off there, just simply screw it in. All right, well, that's a whole bunch of parts that we don't need anymore, so I'm just gonna take these and put them in a safe place. But this is, look at all these parts that we're, that we're basically getting rid of. Okay, this cover is gonna have to come off too. And now we can remove the spark plug wires because we're gonna be replacing those. Oftentimes the wires are pretty stuck in the grommets. So a little, just a little small spray on the wire and on the grommet of some oil such as this Ferton multi-purpose oil or WD-40, whatever, it makes a huge difference and then the wires pull out effortlessly. If these grommets are kind of shot, which they oftentimes are, um, we, we carry those. All right, we can get some of these wires sort of out of the way at this time. And first thing I'll do is install this camshaft extender. This is the part that the seal is going to ride on. And it, because we took the magneto out of there, so if we didn't have this part, the oil would leak out of there. So that's going to fit right over the end of the camshaft and make that connection to the seal. There's a specially supplied bolt. It's turned down like this and that's the one you want to use. It's the, the end of it's threaded, and that's just like on the Magneto or on a, the, the a generator rotor, the, the is threaded so that you could use a special tool to remove it if ever necessary. So we're just gonna thread that all the way through like that, and then set that in there and start turning that. It's on a cone-shaped shaft, so it'll draw itself in and then we can go ahead and snug that down. So that's pretty tight, it's not going anywhere. The next part we can install is the stator. That's going to be attached right here on the end of the crankshaft. And th this is done by a couple of supplied countersunk screws. And you can't really get to the holes because the windings are in the way. So before you do that, you have to take these three screws out here just momentarily. And now the winding is loose from this plate. And you can get to those holes. So. The pickup for the ignition is going to be at roughly 2 o'clock, and so we can go ahead and know that that's the way it's supposed to go and get the first screw started just by a few turns. And then just run the screws down to bottom, bottom them out, first of all. It's important that you don't over that you don't tighten them right away. Okay, they just just barely snugged. Now you remember when we took the the generator stator off of there, we had to kind of pry it out because it's a tight press fit. Well, the plate's no different. It's also a tight fit in there. So just take your screwdriver and go back and forth and turn a, a turn or so on each screw to kind of sort of draw the plate in evenly until it fully bottoms out. Once that fully bottoms out, you'll really feel the bolts are solid and you can also visually see there's no, no gap on the outside. So that's, that's all sorted. Then you can put the windings back on reinstall those three bolts. All 
Oh, and by the way, I just want to also mention, forgot to mention it before, but if you have a really late model bike that has the uh, vibration damper on the end of the crankshaft, you won't be able to use that on this installation. Um, but it'll still run fine without it. Okay, the next thing we can do is now put the coils in place. And the coils are supplied on this cool mounting bracket. And they're going to be mounting right here on those studs. Now, in some, some models have bolts here instead of studs. And that's why you'll find that this is supplied with a bolt and a nut. So you use the bolt if you want to, or use the nylock nut if you want to, to secure it. It's a lot easier to put the spark plug leads on right now before you go any further. It's doable when it's installed, but it's just a little bit obscured by the timing cover. So we'll take, take the supplied spark plug lead. It's all in one piece like this with these little boots pressed on the end. And all you really need to do is cut it in half. Just double it up find the midpoint and snip it in half. So the easiest way to go about this is probably to attach the wires to the coil before you install the coil and then fiddle around with putting the wires through the grommets and then uh, move on. So these are the, the terminals on the coil are thread it's like a like a screw and these are copper core wire and they have to th thread together so if you take something like this ferroton multi-purpose oil or wd-40 or something like that just a little a little uh spritz out and get a little bit on the end of the wire it's what i what i found works you don't really need much at all but just to overcome the friction when you go screwing the wire in and then go ahead and just Start screwing that wire in. Then you'll feel it tighten up and eventually sort of bottom out. That's it. And then you can go ahead and slide the boot over. There we go. It sort of snaps right in place. Just repeat that on the other side. Okay, all set. Now I'm going to go ahead and feed these spark plug wires up inside here. And also this plug needs to go through that hole. Just like that. And now we can pull the plug through There we go. Now we're going to use the nylon, nylon nuts to secure it in place. Okay, you can see how the wires sort of route. This one has, makes a kind of a tight bend but it's, it, it's totally fine. This one's a little bit of a lighter bend and they both go through, the, through here as well as the cable. And then we have one electrical connection to make. The yellow wire and the green wire will get snapped together. So just find a good spot for that to occur. And then this is gonna be spinning so you don't want it in there. So get the wire in a safe spot up out of the way where it's not going to get pinched and then uh, with one of the supplied wire ties you can go ahead and just secure that for example to this bracket and that will keep it from getting in trouble in there. Yeah, that's pretty safe it's not going to get pinched or anything like that. And then this also, 
the rest of the wires from the stator need to go up and you can fit them right in this little space between that boss there very nicely like that. And then also push those through. There we go. That's pretty, pretty Sano. Cut the zip tie here. Okay, so good time to sort of inspect our work here. We're not gonna get hung up in this rotating part here. Don't think we're gonna have any trouble with the getting pinched by the cover. Everything looks pretty cool. So the last thing we can do in the front here is actually put the rotor in place. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the spark plugs out at this point and then set the motor at OT. We're gonna be putting new spark plugs in this motorcycle, which is always a good idea, even if your plugs are in pretty good shape. It's a relatively small part of the investment, and we've got the really cool Baru plugs, uh, which I'll get into when we put them in, but you wanna um, have a look at your plugs before you place an order. Uh, some of the real later model bikes have the long reach plug, three quarter inch, and those are usually uh, marked with a LK, in, in the cylinder head. And if you're gonna order new spark plugs, you wanna make sure that you get the right ones, whether they, these are the shorty um, half inch reach, and then there's the longer ones, which are the L, for the LK head. So just something to keep in mind before you order uh, parts for your bike. We're gonna set the motor at OT, or top dead center. So take this timing plug out. So here we are getting, getting close to top dead center and just tapping on the Kickstarter to bring it right up to the top. Here comes the F mark. S. And there's the OT. That's what we want, top dead center. All right, so now we have a look at the, at the rotor that's gonna go on next, and you'll notice that there is a laser etched mark here uh, at a, and a zero, and this little pickup piece, which is what actually fires the ignition. So go ahead and with motor at, set at OT, go ahead and have that, get that on there. You can feel the magnet pull it. Okay, now before we set the timing, we wanna make sure that you just kind of set that on there. And we wanna make sure that the gap is set correctly. Rotate that over in such a way that it's right at that, at that mark. And then you need to take a 0.4 millimeter feeler gauge and set that in there and make sure that it goes in. So this one's a little bit tight. I'm gonna go with a size smaller just to see, kind of get an idea where I'm at. So I've got a 35 here, and that's also not going in. Yeah, so we're gonna need to make, some, make an adjustment here, but that, that, that's okay. So it's not even, not even really close. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these two screws here just a little bit. So when you, when you have, have loosened the pickup, and you move this back, this pickup back, and insert the feeler gauge, you feel that it, there's a, it's magnetic, and it'll sort of snap itself into place. And with the gauge inserted, then you tighten the screws back up again.
Okay, the next thing you want to do is just go around. I'm going to go around the other side and just look very carefully at the alignment of the pickup. Before we tighten anything up, we want to make sure that the sensor and the pickup are in good relationship to one another. You have to see, you can kind of spin the rotor and you can see right in here that actually the pickup magnet is fully covering. It's not, exact, it's not in the middle, but it doesn't really matter. You just wouldn't want it like hanging off the side just to exaggerate if it was like that. That would, that would need some, you'd need to make some adjustments, but it's fully covered on there, like you can see, and um, that's just something you want to eyeball before you go to the next step. Okay, now we're going to position the rotor and get ready with the bolt. This is an M8 Allen bolt, and this large washer is going to go on there, so we can go ahead and actually thread that in. Okay. So we haven't changed anything, haven't moved anything. We're still at OT. Just double check that for yourself. And now what you want to do is the mark here, the laser etched mark with the zero, we want to make sure that the line is on the right hand side when as looking at it from the front um, edge of the pickup. In other words, let's say this is the, this is the pickup uh, illustration. This is the socket and this is the line that we want it basically like that, right on the edge, like so. With the, this type of fork, it can be a little bit of a thing to get in there with your head, so not a bad idea if you have a mirror, something like this, where you can go in and really look at that alignment. And now I'm pretty happy with that. We're still set at OT, top dead center, and I've got the part installed with the line all lined up and everything looks correct. So what I'm gonna do before tightening the, the screw is just give it a little wrap because it is a tapered fit on the end of the crankshaft. So if we just give it a little tap to seat that cone before we tighten it, that way we could avoid getting uh, anything out of alignment that we have worked hard to get. So. Something like a brass or copper hammer, something that's not, not going to mar anything. And just an, a little wrap, nothing too much. But so that should have actually been enough to just seat that cone. Okay, once you've got what you think everything tight, you have to double check your work because it's very possible that the rotor slipped a little bit on that cone it, it, when you go to tighten it. It just, it could be the case. So I'm just using, kind of turning this at the same time as using the Kickstarter, get that back over, up to, to OT again. There we go, and just going to verify that my mark is still lined up with the magnet, which it is. And if it's off by a couple millimeters, if it is, it's really probably not going to make any difference because there's at least that much slop in the original ignition system too. But you want to have it, have it right. Now, if you did slip it and you are off by more than a couple millimeters or so, that's when you're going to need the puller I talked about earlier, which is the, the special Vape puller, screws in, you know, with the bolt removed, it screws in to the end of the rotor and allows you to pop it out. So you'll want one of those for sure if you need to do that. But I'm pretty happy with the way that li is lined up. I'm going to go ahead and finally tighten this. Check in one more time, everything. OT's right and 
I'm where I need to be with the line and it's all good. So really we're pretty much done up underneath the front cover. We're gonna you know, not put that on yet or anything like that. But the next thing we're gonna do is work on the wiring and uh, button this thing up. And now we're gonna feed the spark plug wires in through these grommets. It uh, can be a little bit of a tricky thing to do, but it's not so bad. A little bit of lubricant on the wire makes a big difference. So as you can see, the wire is pl plenty long enough before we cut it in half. Don't need to put any real tension here, just find a nice line and um, the grommets can be replaced. These are still in really good shape, so just gonna run them. Okay, get some of this wiring out of the way. Next, we'll go ahead and put this bracket on with the ignition control unit and it's gonna sit right in here with these clamps. Okay, loosely position the clamps on there and then they're, they're under quite a lot of spring tension. So I find it easy to just kind of put a little clamp on there like that so that you're not fighting that while you're trying to get the screws in there. So that way you can get that done much more efficiently. All right, so that's nice and up out of the way and secure now that everything's, you need to just straighten it all out a little bit and then go ahead and finish tightening up the fasteners. Also note on the ignition control unit that there are some dip switches. This is all explained in the instructions, by the way. The dip switches all need to be set on, in the off position to get the correct advance curve. The final component is now the voltage regulator. That needs to be located on the bike. There's no real provision for doing that with a bracket. What I found works quite well is that the regulator fits right up inside here quite nicely. Like so. And it's nice and out of the way and it can be held in place with a a couple of strong zip ties, and it, it, I think that's the best spot for it. There's one thing, however, that's very important. It's not really super clear in the instructions, but that's why I'm mentioning it now, is that the regulator absolutely has to be grounded. And this is where you're gonna need to come up with your own way of doing that. Now, we could just, using an eyelet, go in here, but what I like to do, just to make it even a little more robust, is I'll drill, I'm gonna drill a small hole here and tap it and put a machine screw in with an eyelet and then run that wire to a, a good solid ground on the motorcycle and that'll ensure reliability of this. So that's just an easy, quick thing to do. For this kind of work, the, this progressive tap set is really a go-to tool to have because it has, on each size, it has three taps. You start with one, then two, then the third one, and it kind of progressively uh, cuts the threads and does a really, really nice job. And you don't have to go back and forth with the tap. You can just kind of run, run it in and then take the next one, do the same thing, and you've got a perfectly cut 
Oh, I'm putting in an M5 in this one here. All right, so I'm just gonna take a little piece of brown wire and crimp it to a ring connector. And then just simply screw that into that hole I just made. Okay, that should be a pretty good solid ground there. So this is a pretty, pretty, pretty good location for this, this regulator. I'm gonna put a little bit of foam tape on the, on the back side of it, just to kind of take up the little bit of looseness that there is in that application and keep it from rattling around. That's a nice snug fit, and then I'll just gonna put a big zip tie around the whole thing to hold it in place. So as you can see, it's a pretty sanitary installation. Everything has its place, and once we get the bike put back together again, you won't notice that there's anything changed really at all. All we need to do now is connect all the wiring together and try to do a really a uh, nice job of routing the wires and so, and so on. The connections are all described really well in the instructions, so you definitely want to refer to the wiring diagrams that come along with this. But I'm going to go ahead and do it, and, you can, and you'll get an idea about the way I do it. All right, you might as well start right here. This is the plug that, that comes from the coil that we routed through a while back, and it simply plugs into this Harness. With these three loose wires here, there's a supplied connector, and that's going to go in here. So you kind of orient that and then slip the connections in. Black to black, it doesn't matter which black goes to which black, and then of course the red to the red. So that way, just, just snick, uh, you just simply push them until they click and then we'll plug it all together. So you can see there's a little a grommet provided that's gonna go here where the cables exit. It'll need to be trimmed a bit to fit, but it'll, that'll be coming through here. You're gonna to wanna to jam as much of the wire in to this cavity as you can without blocking the breather. And may need to readjust the positioning of the grommet, but think about where the wires are all gonna go and the excess needs to be uh, wrapped up somehow with zip ties and so on. So can kind of already start to make a plan about what the best way is gonna be to wire ultimately with the goal of making these connections together here. Okay, this next wiring harness is gonna plug into the voltage regulator, but first, the, these two black wires need to be snapped into the connector. So kind of look at that to see where those connectors are. And it doesn't matter which one goes to which. And these wires here are going to run back to the battery. Okay, so we've got things pretty well laid out here and everything 
plugged in as far as the, the gang plugs and so on that come with the unit, but there's still a little bit of uh, wiring to do. We need to address the original wires. They all have a, still a function on this thing. Now, um, and we've also got these two wires from the VAPE system that need to be dealt with. So here's what they all are. This, this blue wire it goes to the ignition switch, terminal number two. And that is this one right here, right next to the uh, ground wires, right on the end there. And if you, as you see, that's how the engine stop switch works. I connect my ohm meter here to ground. With the key out, I've got continuity. When I push the key down, it goes away. So when, it's, when that circuit is grounded, is what it shuts the engine off. That's how it worked originally, too. So there's a couple of ways you can do that connection. You could take this wire and run it up and plug it into terminal two, unscrew the wire and, or just attach it here directly if you wanna do that. Or you could actually also connect it to the original wiring underneath the tank. That way you don't have to have any additional wiring that don't kind of really belong. And that's to the red and black circuit here. That, this one goes directly to terminal two. I recommend you test that with a meter, but that's how that works. The other wire here is the blue with the red stripe on it. And that essentially needs to be connected to the blue wire that went to the generator. Um, and this will be for your charging light. The ground wire needs to go to ground. You need to find a suitable ground point to connect this wire to. And the red and the black wires are going to get connected together and, that, and, make, and make one circuit. So those are the connections that need to be made. And how you go about doing it is really a, a matter of your personal choice and how, how you think is the best way to accomplish it. We have a lot of the wiring supplies that you'll need. And so I'm going to make the connections up in this area underneath the tank. It'll be really sano. So I got everything pretty well buttoned up here uh, as far as the wiring is concerned. The first thing, a very important thing to do is I put a fuse in at terminal 30. It's just a good safety precaution. I put a 16 amp fuse inside this fuse holder. So if you check to see if your bike has a fuse there, sometimes you will find that somebody's been there or done that already, but if not, it's a good idea to do that for sure. And then uh, let's look at the way the wiring was done. So I, I did uh, actually modify the original wiring harness. I trimmed it back to uh, right here, as you can see, and then ran the wire connections through this triple flat connector gang plug. And then um, actually the wires that were intended out of the VAPE system to go all the way to the battery. I terminated the ground wire here and kind of made a central grounding point here at the voltage regulator. And then, and then I have a ground wire going back to the battery. And I ran also a new ground wire because the old one was kind of shaky in terms of its, it had been melted at some point. So I ran a fresh ground wire down, attached that to the gearbox. So I wound up then with basically two ground wires and two positive wires with the connectors. And I'll show you now how I'll attach that to the battery. So this is the battery that I chose to use for this thing. It's, as I described earlier, not something we sell, you can source them pretty much anyway, but I did uh, make a slight modification, putting a, these uh, splitters on the terminals and just hit them with a dab of solder to keep them in place. Now you see how really nicely this battery fits inside of the case. It's like almost perfect. But to keep it from rattling, I just have a piece of foam rubber on one side and on the back too, a little softer one, and just sort of feed that all in like together. There we go. I'll be able to get in there, make, make my connections without any problem. And it's got the cool little lid on it with the exits. And very cool. So I'm gonna install that. I'm going to change out all the bulbs and then as far as the spark plugs are concerned 
I'm going to go ahead and put some new plug connectors on there. Now you want to use non-resistor spark plugs with the VAPE system. And as I stated before, we have these Beru spark plugs, both for the short reach and long reach version. And these are really cool. I mean, this Beru is a great, great brand. And these are the, these are the equivalent of the old uh, W4AC from Bosch, which I think is hard to find or maybe no, no longer available anymore. And if you do happen to have the long reach version LK heads, and need the long plugs. We have those as well, as mentioned before. And these are the equivalent of the W260T2, uh, which is what it was called for on, on those old bikes. So we got them both if you need them. And as stated, 1K ohm resistor connectors is what I'm going to install, and that should work perfectly. And unfortunately, it means having to get rid of these um, old Bakelite connectors, but I think that these are going to make the bike run better. So that's what I've been doing when I installed these and it worked out pretty darn well. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to put the, the, the um, going to get the spark plugs going, the change all the bulbs out, get the tank back on, and then we'll fire this thing up and see how it runs. Batteries installed, everything's all buttoned up and I just slipped the tank on. I didn't do the crossover tube yet, just in case I have to take it back apart again, but uh, it's Seems like everything's working. Uh, the lights here are the, just you can see the, the, the neutral light and the charging light are so bright. Look at the, how much brighter the turn signals are and headlight as well. It's really pretty neat. The 12 volt makes a big difference. And listen to the horn. It's, like I said before, it has a different tone, but it works great. Now let's see. Uh, it, if it, if it starts starts up also, give it a little bit of fuel. Cool, charging light is working properly. Sounds solid. I think we have a winner. I can't wait to go test ride it, which is what I'm gonna do next after I button everything up, tune it, make sure everything's looking good, get this bike back to the owner. This is a really neat system. There's so many benefits to the VAPA system on these old bikes. And keep in mind also for other pre, uh, post-war bikes, the singles as well, we have them this in stock and Next thing you know, we're going to be doing a video on a slash five, uh, which we also have a system for on slash six. And yeah, it's a really neat system. Check it out on our website. There's more information. If you have any, have any questions, make sure that you give us a call or send us an email and we'll help you any way we can. Keep it your two valve on the road, making it better than ever before. This is William from Boxer Two Valve. Keep the shiny side up.